Riverside Church, and uh, if you're a visitor, we welcome you, and uh, if you're a member, then welcome too, you know. I want to give you uh, uh, some announcements here. The Happiness Circle will meet tomorrow at 1, and this Thursday at 6 p.m. is the staff Christmas party. And then this coming Saturday at 11 a.m. is a cookies and cocoa party for the children of the church. And they're going to decorate cookies and make Christmas cards. <coughs> Next time we've got a real treat. The United Methodist Men will be hosting a Christmas luncheon for the entire church family. And the menu is turkey, dressing, sweet potato casserole, green beans, rolls, Cranberry sauce, drinks, and cheesecake, and everyone is welcome. Anybody want me to say anything about that? It's gonna be good. <laughs> are you are you cooking that? Uh, no, but I'm one of the spectators. Uh, are you are you a consultant? I'm part of it. Yeah. yeah okay. Good. Uh, does anybody uh, in the church uh, have any additional announcements to make this morning? Yeah, so we'll hear. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is a time of year to show our appreciation to our staff. Lois and I are going to be collecting cash if possible. We'll collect until December 19th. And if you put cash in the collection plate, make sure to mark it for any staff appreciation. Okay, thank you. Heralds of Christ, <clears throat> would you please uh, join in singing this, this hymn together?
remain standing for the affirmation of faith. It's on 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you so much. This morning's gospel reading is from Luke chapter 1. Maybe it's on page 60 if you want to join with us today. I'm sorry. Luke chapter 1, verses 68 through 79. Let us hear God's word. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he was looking favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for, for us in the house of his servant David. And he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that it would be saved from all enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors, and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness, before him in all our days, and you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. Yet for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people, and by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercies of our God, the dawn from on high will break, break upon us to give light to whose souls who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Are there prayers of the people today? Yes. Lee Hayes. Uh, my daughter Mary is in the hospital. She's been in there and uh, we think, oh, she, she's doing better. Uh, but she's waiting uh, some MRI results this morning. Uh, not sure exactly what the uh, uh, diagnosis is. And then I'd like to add, uh, I've got a, uh, one of my uh, 
best friends uh, in Kentucky that I was in service with that's uh, in hospice and um, is uh, just like to include him. His name is Seaburn Elsie in, in your prayer. I would like to continue to pray for my daughter Lisa. She's in for chemo treatment and having a hard time. What was your first name of your daughter? Elisa Parrish. Carl Dow and Alicia Parrish. Anyone else? My, excuse me, my daughter-in-law, Raymond's granddaughter, Carla Joliet, died unexpectedly. And uh, she was almost like a father to her. She had a real hard time dealing with the staff of this place. I didn't know that. I'm sorry to remember your family. Thank you. Yes. Anyone else? We have several here on our hearts and minds today, so let us uh, lay those before the Lord today as we pray. God, we come before you with uh, humble hearts today to lift up all the names that have been mentioned. We know, dear God, that you're able to do everything, Lord, do great things, and we know, Lord, you are the great physician. Please forgive us, Lord, of our failures and lack of faith. God, help us stand firm, Lord, as we believe today, as we believe, Lord, you can do uh, wonderf wonderful, miraculous things and how sufficient your grace is. God, we pray for every person that's been lifted up today. We pray for those that may be watching today online, that God, if they have needs, that Lord, you would touch them also. Be with those in traveling mercies, be with families and friends, Lord, to travel, and the stranger, Lord, that we have not met. God, be with all of them. And as we pray, let us pray the prayer you taught us to pray as your servants. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our second hymn this morning is number 220, Angels from the Realms of Glory. We will sing the first, the third, and the fourth verses. Would you please stand if you're able?
guys. Hello. Hey, it works. Everybody hear me okay? Yeah. You know, my voice the way it is today, I can I can sing. Way down low. <laughs> oh, real high. You have your voice ever like that? I'm picky. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, today we're going to talk about the wise men again. Y'all remember last week we talked about the wise men? Yeah. Remember they were way back there in the back? We had to you know, drag them down the front. Yeah. We're not going to drag them out today, okay? Yeah. Now nah, we're just going to, we're going to see if we can figure out what kind of message they give us today. Now the wise men have been on a journey and they're trying to make it to, to Bethlehem to see the baby Jesus. And y'all know who the baby Jesus is? Y'all heard about the baby Jesus, Sam? Okay, cool. And so there's a star, so they're following the star, and they're trying to make a way to find Jesus. Have y'all ever been on a trip? Yeah. Do y'all ever been way off somewhere you've never been before? Yeah. Okay, did your mom or dad use a map? Yes. Yeah. Dad never uses maps, did he? <laughs> we figure that stuff out. But now they got, what's that stuff, GPS or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Use a GPS. We didn't have a G we didn't have a GPS when it was your age. We just got in a horse and buggy and just kept going. That's all we did. A long time ago. We used to go to school up one side snowing and back barefooted down the other side. We we actually lived in huts back then, so far. No, we actually had houses. The bags are on the way. I had to send after my little helper today went to get them. So we're bringing them back in. Okay, I'm gonna ask Miss Carol to help me out today. Carol? Uh, first, guys, look around and see if y'all see the wise men. Don't touch them. Just look around. Y'all can look and see if that. Look up here somewhere. Look up this way. Look this way. No? No, the wise men. No, I'm not me. I'm not the wise man. Oh, y'all see them over there? Look. Okay, don't touch them. Don't touch them. Don't touch them. Y'all come back over here. Come back over here. Don't touch them. Now, Miss Carol, would you look and see what kind of notes in there over there for us? What does it say? Got a note in there? What's it say? John 8:12. Can you come and read John 8:12 to us? He's like the sergeant of arms over there. Yeah. Look, that's right. You should listen to him and you'll find out in just a second. Okay. 8:12. Okay, she's going to read to us. Let's hear what the wise man, guys, listen. Let's see what the wise man's got to say to us today. Just first one, right? Yes. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk, walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Have the light of life. Okay. I may have something in my pocket to show you guys this morning. Let me see. No, you're not going to keep it. This is mine. But I've got this neat thing here that, that somebody gave me, and it says, Strong is the one who leans on God. It's got it's got a little pocket knife in it, but my mom won't let me have a knife, so I can't play with it. But then I have this really important. Well, look at there. It's got a light. See? Shot, see? See there? You see the light? See the light? And what? It, and so we need the light of God, don't we? We need the light of God to prepare us away. So I just want y'all to remember: when you're on a trip, sometimes you need a light, don't you? And so that's what it said. It says, "Prepare the way." So we're getting our we're getting ready for our trip to go see the baby Jesus. And so the wise men said, prepare the way. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay? And I've got y'all some goodies in a minute, alright? Alright, let's bow together. Everybody, let's get real quiet and pray. And then I think the sergeant arms is gonna bring in some goodies for us, okay? That's right. Okay, let's pray. Okay. Alright, we got this under control. Everybody, let's pray. God, we thank you so much for loving us and giving us these children, young people. God, I just pray that you continue to bless them and remind them to prepare the way of the Lord as they live out their life. Let us be an example to them. And God, thank you for the light that shines our way. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank y'all so much. All right. Mr. Scott is going to get y'all. One at a time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, Leo Carter. I'm going this way. Layla, here you go. Thank you. I'm going this way. Wait for me! Wait for me! 
Wait for me too. <laughs> Sorry if I was going far. Tony, you miss all that. I do. I know you do. <laughs> I was telling about in the first service about a uh, be careful about what you do because kids watch everything you do and they'll repeat it in front of everybody when you don't want them to. And I was at Union City at the first church there and I was associate. We had about 800 in the congregation there and it was my turn to preach and do the children's time. And so it was two preachers there. I was associate. And so I come down and do the children's time. And I asked, was talking about getting to church and I said, if any of y'all ever had trouble getting to church, one little boy raised his hand and says, Yes, Pastor Steve, we had trouble this morning. I said, did your car break down? No. Nope. I said, did you have trouble? Uh, you know, what, what was it? He said, Mom and Dad got in a fight. <laughs> and I said, uh-oh. And I was like, I want to say, let's pray, let's forget this. Because I, yeah, I knew that little boy was going to live after this was over. And he went into details about Mama said that she didn't like that shirt that Daddy was wearing and wore it all the time. No, nobody ever does that. And then says, he says he wasn't wearing a tie. She said, you'll wear a tie over my day, or you won't, whatever. They just got in a big old fight. And the kid told her every detail. And I said, okay, we're going to pray now. And um, I don't know. I didn't see that kid after that for a long time. But I love these kids, and I hope that y'all cherish them because in all their excitement, uh, they are your church. They're, they're coming up, and so pray for them and help them be encouraged. Uh, we want to lift up our, our tithes and offerings now. Like I said, the first year we'll go back to using ushers if everything's well. And uh, But right now we just uh, we place an offering and begin the service and end the service at your convenience. And so let us pray God's blessing upon these gifts. God, we do come before you and we are so thankful for so many blessings. God, you've given us so much and we just take a portion of what we've been given and give back. And God, we pray that it be used uh, for the work of the church. I uh, pray it's work, uh, Lord, used for what is needed to, Lord, help the kingdom of God be built here among us. God, we thank you for the gift and the giver, and we praise you in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. Now let us stand for the doxology. It's important because it is uh, part of that. But it's talking about the high priesthood of Ananias. And uh, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And then beginning with verse 3. He went into all the region around Jordan proclaiming the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be made low, and every crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. And this is the word of God for the people of God. I want to look back just for a moment, if I can, to the first passage I read to you in Luke chapter 1, and, and just think about some of the things that are said here as we prepare the way of the Lord. Uh, it says he has, has raised up, in verse 69, he has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from the old, that we 
that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of those who hate us. I was reading some articles this week and something just kind of just just kind of slapped me in the face, I guess you'd say. It was talking about how the world in its present state is trying to bring down the Christian church. And I never really thought about it. Well, I don't know about that, but you think about some of the things that's going on in society, uh, it's kind of pushing us away from the church and uh, the understanding of God and the discipline of the church. Uh, it's becoming a place where there's not as many believers as they were, say, as I told the kids when I grew up and we lived in huts, you know, it's not like that. Uh, but a lot has changed. And I think the burden of us, for us today as Christians is even heavier that we prepare a way. Prepare the way of the Lord. And I really hadn't thought about the responsibility, how really, really heavy it is. It really has become more uh, burdensome for us as we try to uh, live out a faithful life in front of others. Uh, it's really become important that we do this every day. Like the kid who was watching his mom and dad in a fight over wearing a shirt go to church, there are others watching us as well. They're watching us to see our reactions, to see how we handle tragedy in our life, whether or not we trust God, to see how we uh, prepare for things in our workplace, uh, how we take on uh, uh, sickness and tragedy. Uh, people are really watching us, and we are those examples of preparing a way. And I, you want to use a, I want to use an illustration. Years ago, before my, my brother-in-law died, he died at a young age. He was 58, I believe. And he had, uh, he had advanced Parkinson uh, that came on him, and he, was, he became, also became uh, dementia, and it, it just got to the point that it, it took his life. And uh, one time they had this decision. They were going to go out to Colorado to see my nephew who was working on the pipeline. And so they went out there, and it was going to take turns driving, and I didn't get to go because I had a funeral at one of the churches, and I, I couldn't get away. It was, it was during the, somebody passed the church, and I had to stay back. But I went, and while they were in the Colorados, they had a big snowstorm come. Now, I've been there when it's clear, and that's enough for me. That's some high mountains. It's beautiful. It's, it's in awe when you see it. It's kind of like the Grand Canyon. First time I saw it, or the only time I saw it, I just stepped back and I said, that's one big hole right there. I mean, that's that's a, amazing. And surely there's a God when you see something like that. But they had to drive up this mountain. It was Tammy's time to drive. And it come this snowstorm. Now you imagine, a two-wheel drive vehicle, minivan, packed full of screaming kids, nephews and nieces, and a brother-in-law who has Parkson, who's already nervous as he can be, and he is hanging on for dear life over there on the pastor's side, telling her, please don't run off the road. And she said all she could see was is just a, a strip around the edge. There was no guardrails. That's some brave people out there. There's no guardrails. And she was driving. That snow was getting thicker, and she was just driving. And the only thing she could see was the path or the tracks of the person in front of her. Now, one or two things are going to happen when you do that. One is the person in front of you can't see is going to run off the ditch. And you're going to go right with them. Or you're going to have somebody in front of you that knows what they're doing and driving that path and you can be led safely around that mountain. Well, thankfully I still have my first wife. Amen. And she followed that path. They made it around the mountain. Made it down. They all had to have... Uh, some therapy after it was over with, but they all made it. Now imagine that in your life, there's somebody that's following you. You are the only tracks that they see in their life. Are you with me, church? You're the only tracks that they see in their life, and they are following you wherever you go and whatever you do. And if you take them off in the ditch, that's where they're going to. But if you prepare the way of the Lord and show them the path to follow, you will help save their life. 
I saw a video on social media where these deer were following the leader and every one of those deer jumped off a bridge and perished. Every one of them. And somebody was on watch and saw it and said, why in the world would all those deer go follow that deer into, the, into that ravine and all die? And they said they couldn't see nothing but the person in front of them or the animal in front of them. And they were used to following their leader. And they all perished. Now I want to be a leader that doesn't cause you to perish. I want to point you to the way of the cross. And I pray that whoever is your spiritual leader each day in your life, that you allow them, or if you're the spiritual leader, that you will guide people to the way of the cross. As John would say, prepare the way. The one who cries out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. One who is coming, who I am not worthy to him, unlatches, unlatches sandals. Prepare the way of the Lord. He is the one who brings new life. He is the one who's going to be the perfect Savior and, and He is going to reign over this world. Follow Him. Now, the second part I want to share with you is in chapter 3. We sometimes get to the point when we are going through trials and tribulations in our life that we start to make excuses of why we can't prepare the way. Well, God... That's a big valley in front of me. God, that road is really crooked. God, that mountain is way too high, and there's no way I'll ever get over that. God, this road is so rough. And the prophet Isaiah kind of eliminates those excuses. The one, of, one who cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. He will make his path straight. Every valley, remember those valleys you couldn't get through, shall be filled. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough ways made smooth. And then if you're like Paul that sometimes would complain and say, I, my flesh is so weak. And he says, but the flesh shall see the salvation of God. Kind of eliminates all excuses, doesn't it? You see, God will make a way when we allow Him a path in our lives. He will be the one who lays out the tracks for us to follow. One day it says, Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Are you preparing a way for Him? In your life, in your family's life, we follow by example. I, 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 I follow by example my parents, how they did, I followed them. You can give bad examples as a parent or as a leader, and you can cause a lot of harm. But you can't go wrong leading up to Jesus. Yes, as the article I read earlier said that the world is trying to belittle the church and somehow dissolve it so there is no uh, accountability. I'm remembering what God's word is. It will not return void. And it says the word of God shall endure for all eternity. And so I believe today that we as the people of God can make a way. The one who cries in the wilderness make a way. He's coming. He's coming during this Advent season and we are called to prepare the way and to be an example to those around us as they follow us that they too will know Jesus. It seems in the condition the world is it may not be very long. In our lifespan it's really not that long. I mean our life is fleeting. It's short. You know, I was just mentioned my brother-in-law died at 58. My brother died at 56. My, my wife's own father died in his 40s. We have no promise of tomorrow. So every day should be an urgent day that we try to do all we can for the glory of God. Every moment, every hour, every second we have for the glory of Him. And all I can say for you today is, I don't have all the answers. I'm still looking myself. As the scriptures say, we look through a, dark, a glass darkly, but one day we'll see face to face.
But I do the best I can with God's help, by His grace and by His mercy, to lead those who will follow to a loving and merciful God. And today I say to you as a, as a spiritual leader, it's time we, the church, prepare the way. Amen? Let's pray. <clears throat> Dear God, we thank you. We thank you when the world has taken us in a lot of different directions. That you are still willing to come into our lives and allow us to clear the path for others to know you. God, we're about to come before your table again, a reminder of the path that you've already made for us. Remember that on that night you took the bread and you broke it and you said, this is my body, take and eat of this. And as you went through that time of the meal, you lifted up the cup and you said, this is my blood, which is shed for you for remission of sin. As often as we do this, do this in remembrance of you. So God, we come before the table, inviting, Lord, those who will come to prepare the way. And we'll give you all praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Brother Sanders, you're going to lead us in the Dr. Letters response, page 12. If you'll turn to page 12 with me in the hymnal, thanks for Brother Sanders to lead us in the response for the people. Page 12 of your uh, hymnal this morning, and let us join together as we come before the table. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery and to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and by spirit. And on the night he gave himself up, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, this is my blood, the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine, and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, 
one in the ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Now, would you come as the ushers lead you? Remember that you can leave an offering at the uh, chancellor rail or the, uh, the altar rail uh, for missions in our church. Would you come?
Closing hymn for the morning is going to be number 196 in your hymnal. Come, thou long expected Jesus. Please stand if you are able. <laughs> receive the benediction. Gracious God, we go forth now to serve you. Send us forth as your people. Prepare the way of the Lord in our lives and others. And Lord, may those who follow us, Lord, follow you. And we thank you and praise you in the precious and holy name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Make sure you welcome your neighbor here today.